final speaker of Act One is a solo vaudevillian and a longtime local street performer. He launched his career by busking on weekends with magic tricks and balloon animals right here in Eau Claire Market back in 1996. Welcome to the stage, James Jordan. Okay, uh, I'm not sure how much of this I'll get through with all the cringing of photos of me, um, but we'll try our best. <clears throat> when I was young, my dad would drive me around the city and tell me a lot of stories about what buildings used to be. And I didn't give a shit. Because <laughs> those were old buildings. These are new buildings. New buildings have to replace old buildings, and new things never become old. So that problem would never happen to me, <laughs> but it has. Um, I don't know, the, like, I didn't think it would happen to Eau Claire Market, despite the fact that everybody else saw the red flags. <laughs> I mean, seriously, when it was first pitched in 1988, nobody told Ralph Klein that you can't sell groceries from the back of a derelict bus barn. <laughs> so they had to tear this down and rebuild an entirely new building, and they were surprised that it cost 25 million extra dollars to do that. So no one was surprised when the building was sold five years after it opened. Three times in one year. For eventually a third of the price of building the place. So no one was really surprised when that new owner eventually announced, we're going to tear this down and build residences. Right? No one was really shocked by that, but that was 2006. They said they would do that. And that's why I'm really happy the wrecking ball's finally swinging. Right? <laughs> because I'm getting closure on this building. Now, this is me busking in the 90s. Now, the 90s was a hot time for busking, and I don't think we'll see another time like it. <laughs> Unless we turn the $5 bill into a $5 coin. That was the key to busking in the 90s. The toonie doubled everybody's income. These are, a, these are some of the buskers that were performing. We, like, I was a, an awkward 14-year-old nerd surrounded by incredible talent. Uh, Rainbow the Clown, who's here tonight. Uh, Chris Visser, a magician friend of mine who doesn't know who Dan the One Man Band is, right? These are people I got to share my life with. Calgary even had a really successful buskers festival for a while. It was the Buskers Wall of Fame right here Every year, a winner was chosen by a committee of who was the best busker, and then their face was mounted on the wall just across from the wicked arcade that used to be attached to this theater. I competed doing what I do best, balloon animals, magic, and unhinged 16-year-old narcissism. <laughs> and for some reason, I won. <laughs> No, no, it was a hollow victory. That was 1998, the year the mall was sold three times to different owners. So instead of putting my picture up on the wall of fame, the new owners took the whole wall down and they rented the wall to architects. Uh, so it, it, it was kind of the beginning of the end for busking but we stuck around for as long as we could because it was a great system. We policed ourselves. There were five spots that you could set up in. You'd just roll up with your gear. You'd start doing your thing until somebody else came up, and then you would have to shut down in about 30 minutes. And then the two of you, three of you, four of you would just take 30-minute shifts, alternating in that one spot, right? And these, these are some of the buskers. Tomko Lamb, Karen, uh, uh, Dan the One Man Band. There's Rainbow the Clown right over there. We'd share this place and we'd do great things until the magicians fucked it up. <laughs> we were all doing this trick where you would pick a card, sign it, put it back in the deck, and we'd throw the cards in the air and one card would be stuck to the ceiling and it'd be your card. All of us were doing this trick and the roof was littered in cards. <laughs> till finally Chris Visser took the hit for all of us and had his license revoked. Uh, we said, okay, we're literally hitting the ceiling of this place. It's maybe time to take this show outside. So right behind what was then the Hard Rock Cafe was this amphitheater that was barely ever used. We set up our shows. We did, we gathered a crowd. We passed a hat at the end of the show and we made a lot of tunies. It was a really good time to be a busker. 
But, you know, people moved on. Some people gave up. For a while, I was the only guy working that stage for maybe about two years, just trying to keep the site active, really, for future generations in a way, but also just because I wouldn't give up on this city. <laughs> I really wanted this to succeed, um, but the city had other plans. <laughs> Here was Eau Claire Market Land. Out there, City of Calgary rules. They had a sign on the back of the stage that just had a list of rules, all starting with the word no. We called them the 10 no mandments. <laughs> and of course, we broke the rules, but we had good times, and we did great shows, and maybe we were a little loud sometimes, and, and the residents, but who moves to the middle of the city for peace and quiet? <laughs> but eventually, you know, like buskers moved away, and I still wanted to keep the site active, so I started my own buskers festival. Um, I tried three or four times to do my own Buskers Festival, but every year there was a new obstacle or a new shutdown, and I'd bring people in, and the festival kind of wouldn't happen, and I'd be left holding the bag of shit. <laughs> um, so eventually, even I gave up. But that was about the same time the city gave up on me. Tree by tree, brick by brick, they tore down my theater. And it hurt. But I wasn't surprised because this has been going on for such a long time. Honestly, this is the closure that I've been looking for. This is the closure of a friend or a loved one who's been sick for 25 years and finally passes. You know? <laughs> I left my mark, literally and metaphorically. I took those bricks and I built a fire pit in my backyard. <laughs> and as one last trick, I want all of you to think of a card. And when you leave, I want you to go downstairs to the bottom of the escalators and look up, because there's a real good chance your card is stuck to the ceiling right now, because every day for the last month, I come here and I throw one more card up under the ceiling. <laughs> and I hope they stay here until the brick falls. I need this. Thank you, Calgary. I miss you. <laughs> Thank you.